good one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much for that. So Hajar, please, the floor is yours. You can start. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you all doing fine. It's me, Hajar. As Hagar, I guess in English, they, they pronounce it Hagar. I guess I saw it somewhere in the Bible, Hagar or something, yeah? <laughs> but anyways, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today, I just want to uh, show you or introduce you to one of the uh, Parnot um, uh, celebrations. Uh, it's the Moroccan wedding. I'm going to start first by, by Can you please, sharing uh, the screen. Yeah, yeah that's I'm going to share. Yes, yes. Can you please activate the... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I need to yeah. modify the settings. So, yeah, so here you go. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. I'm just going to start by the first slide. First, yes, thank you. Okay, let's start. Uh, well, there is the title. Okay, as I said, my name is Hajar, and uh, today's topic is about Moroccan within between authenticity and modernity. Um, I'm gonna start with the table of contents. I hope if it, I hope that my voice is clear, right? Is it clear? Yeah, it okay. is. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. So we're gonna go into, through four um, titles here: the marriage ceremony, the hammam day, the henna night. The hammam is the bath or spa in Arabic. Okay, the hammam is the bath or spa. And the henna night, the henna tattoo, the green one, okay? And the wooden day. Okay, let's start. Here, the marriage ceremony. I choose two pictures here. If you can see, I choose two pictures for a, a purpose. So um, there's a difference between the two pictures. It's about time. The left one is in the past and the right one is nowadays okay overall you can see some differences in the makeup thing the hairstyle but in general it looks really the same even if it's the time difference is so big but it looks the same the little difference here is the makeup thing and the hair and the hairstyling but overall it it looks alike yeah okay so uh, here, um, just an important quote that Moroccan use all the time while preparing for their wedding ceremony. A wedding night requires a year of reflection. I guess, I guess American do think the same too, right? <laughs> a year to think about their dress, the white dress, yeah? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the best quote to describe the Moroccan wedding. It is famous among Moroccans to I repeat this proverb proverb while preparing for the once in a lifetime occasion hence they make it the most memorable experience ever as it tops any other family celebration when i say family celebration here because we have some celebrations that go above the the family celebration which is the religious celebrations okay so that's why i choose the word family celebration and i choose the one saying um, for the famous historian Moroccan Abdel Hadi Tazi, and I choose it uh, just it's like a looking forward to what I'm going to present after. Okay, so he said, despite the Western life's um, lifestyle, I'm sorry because the uh, can I how can you yes. So the famous Moroccan historian Abdel Hadi Tazi said, despite the Western life. Society, young have a strong nostalgia and high regard for the traditions and customs 
that have profoundly marked the life of our country. Younger generations like me, like uh, Mr. Omar, love and cling to true Moroccan traditions. We feel a desire to revive the traditions of Morocco, which reflects our multifaceted uh, history and cultural heritage. Here I choose some pictures in. As you can see, it's, it's totally different. It's from the, the past days again. It really looks old, right? It's so old. <laughs> but it looks the same as nowadays. Just some difference. Okay, first of all, the Moroccan marriage rituals used to be practiced for a seven days long tradition. That's a long period of time, but it was beautiful. Yeah, nowadays you might find the same practice in country sites, like my country site too. We still do that. Yeah. But in cities, however, in cities, it has been reduced to three days due to time, to money, to, yeah. you know. This, this, this means that you should... Sorry, Hajar. This means that yeah. you should have a very good budget if you, yeah, if you yes. would love to, <laughs> to go for a wedding ceremony. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, sometimes they reduce it even to one day. But the most important thing here is not about the days. Even if Moroccans have to, to reduce it to one day, they will do everything in that period of time. You know, every ritual. It's not about the time, it's about the content. You know what I mean? Even if it's seven days or one day, they will concise everything and contract everything to fit the time, okay? <laughs> so this euphoric celebration practices are always there to showcase two things. The bride's charm, because we're just going to talk about the bride, the bride, the bride. Poor the groom is not going to have a, <laughs> that big space <laughs> during the ceremony, you know? <laughs> as everywhere in the world, right? <laughs> Anyways, and grace, along with the two families unity, because in Morocco, or in Arabic culture, in Berber culture, it's not just a couple things that they get married, it's about two families that get along, you know? It's a two family thing. That's why it takes a long time to agree on everything. <laughs> um, prior to the big day, by months or even a year, the betrothal or engagement ritual puts the first step to deal with the budget, the date, and wedding gifts. I give the uh, bet bet betrothal a little paragraph because I'm not going to talk about it, but really it's a big thing itself, you know? It has its own rituals and- It's, it's, it's another it. wedding ceremony. <laughs> it's another wedding ceremony. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Let's see here. I have three pictures. And they just describe what do we call Moses um, here, and they um, does it appear the uh, the Zoom thing on your yeah, screen? Yeah, we we can see it, Haja. Yeah, okay. we can see it. I'm just going to do this because I I want I want you to see the whole thing, not just yes, like this. That's good. Yeah. So during the preparations, the couple chooses a special day to bring the adul. Adul are representative of the Islamic law, let's say, and they must witness the marriage of the two couple to the bride's house as to become Islamically and officially a husband and wife. The moment they sign the nikah papers, the contract, the marriage contract, with the participation of the closest relatives only. That's it depends on the couple, to be honest, because sometimes it's a, they just go to the office of the adul and they sign the contract. Sometimes they go to the bride's house to the celebrate it, to, um, to sign it. Some people just like to show it to the whole world in the, in the, uh, in the wedding ceremony, okay? Yeah, and, and sorry, uh, Hazard, for interrupting. Yes. And, and yes. other families, uh, yeah, think that this is a secret it shouldn't be shared to other people, at least yes. at this stage. Yes. So we have to yes. keep everything between us till it's official. Okay? Yes. yes. Go ahead, to, please. To, to, Ajari. to not break the good luck. To not break the good luck. Yeah. Yeah? The baraka or the good luck. Yes. Exactly. exactly. So here is the, uh, the groom is signing. Then the bride is signing. Then he lifts the uh, veil. Yeah, that's the name. The veil and kiss her forehead okay 
Second, the, hen, the Hammam day, the spa day. Here are some pictures of uh, the exact thing that we do. You know, the bride goes to the Hammam for, to purify. It's beautiful. <laughs> Everything is white, by the way. It's the color purity and stuff like that. Um, again, let me, let me do this. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to move your head here and there. I'm sorry, Mr. Mustafa. Okay, the we're in a special white costume. The beautiful bride with her bride, bridesmaids get ready for the nuptial hammam bath. Okay, as you can see in the picture, that's 100% true. That's what the Horican brides do. The symbolically purifying events, as we said, it's, it's to symbolically purifying marks the beginning of the couple's new journey it's for good luck and stuff like that it all starts with a warm welcome full of songs and you use the moroccan you <laughs> it's a kind of celebration the sound that women make to celebrate or to announce that they are happy and continues with the best exfoliation and hair treatment under under the candles lights and, and by the way, Moroccan That's women are, are very good in, in your use. And Hajar might, might give an example. Yes, they are. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> like this. I'm not that good. <laughs> okay, let's move. It's like this. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's smallest than this. But anyways, overall, it's like this. The Moroccan bridal bath is in the past had its special atmosphere as everyone in the neighborhood knew and talks about it. Not nowadays, sometimes in the countryside, but in cities, it doesn't happen anymore. It's just a secret thing between family members. But in the past, everyone in the neighbor, neighborhood was following the bride to the hammam place and doing the UUs and, and celebrating and singing. Uh, the children used to follow the bride from her home to the hammam's door and back again when she finishes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's move to now to the Hanna day. I choose these two pictures because normally the night of Hanna, it's a night, it's not a day, okay? We call it Hanna night exactly, it's not a day. Uh, because it starts in the evening and uh, the bride must um fold her hand or design her hand with henna tattoos both hands and both feet completed you know to represent that she's the queen of the of the night <laughs> okay it's like this the evening of the henna ritual is an, an ancestral tradition that represents prosperity yes prosperity is a is a really is a symbol of this night and the other coming nights. Not only the Hanna tattoo decorates the bride's hands and feet, but also holds the fertility and good luck. Baraka in Arabic, meanings within. That's it's not it's not just to decorate your hands or feet, but it gives uh, a lot than, um, more than that, like fertility and good luck. The bride dresses in the traditional kaftan, usually green. So kaftan is the costume. Usually green in the night, uh, in the uh, Hanna day, in Hanna night, it's the green color the most, as you can see I, in the picture, I, I, everything I think, green. Hajar, I th mm. you, you perhaps, yeah, know about wedding ceremonies more than me. Uh, I think that this is the really? first entry of, of the woman, of the bride. Yes, this is the first uh, entry, but uh, we can say it's the henna thing too. Because yeah. here, yes, the henna, because the green symbolizes the henna, yes. So the henna designs are always done, uh, done, sorry, done by the Nakasha. Nakasha is the woman who takes the responsibility to design the hands and feet of the bride and everyone in the family too, you know, but not as fully hand as the bride. Only women, friends, and family are allowed to attend this ritual. If this ritual is in, in the bride's house, it's private. If it's, again, if it's concise to one day within, every, every ritual in one day, 
she can do that in front of all the guests. Before the bride there, before the bride, there is a silver tray carrying, oh, sorry, carrying, uh, carrying containers of rose water, eggs, sugar, dates, and obviously henna. Um, there is one important thing, uh, what contains the, 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 uh, the containers of the uh, carrying depends on the region of Morocco. So each region has its special um, touch. Okay, Sahara, North, East, West, Berber, it depends, okay? Each region has its special, but overall, uh, they, they have the same, the same um, rituals in general, but each region has its um, like a special touch. Yeah, that's a special touch. Okay, uh, we're gonna see the wedding day. No, this is a musical instrument. It's a Moroccan instrument, okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a hijabi, this is a hijabi <laughs> bride. <laughs> the festive day is here. Both the groom and bride are getting ready for a night full of joy, music and food, okay. Here the groom is going to be a little bit, is going to show up too, like the bride. Um, actually, it depends on the wedding day. It depends if the groom, it depends uh, if they agreed. So if the wedding day is mixed, women and men, he can stand next to his bride. If it's separated, he will be the start of the a man night, and she will be the star of the woman night, okay? Um, again, about the clothes, sometimes the groom wears one, one costume. Yeah, sorry, Hajar, for interrupting, please. Yes. Uh, now, do you think, uh, Hajar, that, I mean, recently, recently people, I mean, divide, I mean, uh, the celebration into two parts, okay? One where... I mean, the no, not not that much, but I can I can tell you one hundred percent that the northern area of Morocco they still stick the thing separation. Yes. Oh yeah, today. I see. Even I cities, think yes, okay, the, north, yeah. okay. the northern area sticks to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why. Right. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So as I said, the groom costume depends on what they agreed on before. Uh, sometimes they match the clothes between the groom and and the, the, uh, the bride, green, green, blue, blue, white, white, everything. Sometimes he will just one suit for the whole wedding. And sometimes a traditional, one traditional uh, costume for the whole wedding again. The festivity of the Urs, so the Urs is the wedding day in Arabic, Ursun. Normally starts at 8 p.m. And it lasts till morning, okay? A long night wow. okay, of dancing. <laughs> yes. Depending on the budget, music can be played by singers or a DJ player. Okay, so if you can afford a lot of money, you can bring singers. If you cannot, you can bring a DJ, and the DJ player is good too. You know, if he chooses the best songs, that's that's perfect. Here's some pictures of the wedding. We have first the a magisterial chair with decoration around, said the groom and his bride. So they sit in a chair like this. Um, each place is designed the way they want. You may find floral thing, you may find lightning. It depends on the place or the region or just the creation of the, uh, of the uh, let's say, handmade. The <laughs> Who made the, that, that chair, yes. Uh, here, the table of the guests, as you can see, it's, it's really festive, it's well decorated, everything is well put. As the guests arrive, servers go around the place, you know, the whole night, to offer nice and delicious Moroccan sweets with mint tea. That's every time they accompany Moroccan sweets with mint tea. 
sometimes juice if you don't drink mint and they even ask you if you are diabetes so they can bring you tea without sugar <laughs> it's possible that too yes then follow it by two meals or more it depends on the budget <laughs> and desserts after long hours of dancing you know the meal doesn't really uh, get prepared till the people are really hungry so they can eat very well <laughs> that's a must <laughs> okay ah, by the way the music is really matching every step of the wedding like there's a music for the uh, eating time there's a music for the entry time there's a music for every step so if you just hear the music of the eating time you are expecting the food to enter and that's that's the thing okay here i'm just going to go through some other details here as you can see this woman is not her mother it's called negefa and it is a term used to the woman that dresses and introduces the bride during the wedding ceremony she takes care of everything hairstyle makeup um, uh, accessories uh, and the um, and changing, um, helping her to change uh, the costumes because the Moroccan wedding, the, uh, the Moroccan bride changes seven times her costumes. That's a maximum. And minimum is five. Okay? Seven times minimum is five. Okay. The second picture below. Yeah, sorry, sorry, is... Hazar, for, uh, yeah, yes? for intervening again. Now, in this point, in this point, uh, usually, I mean, the, uh, the bride uh, and also the groom, I mean, they dress uh, according to the different parts, I mean, according to the culture of different parts of Morocco, exactly. representing yes. the Amazeri dress, the Sahrawi dress, the Fessi dress. dress. I mean, yeah, different, different, let's say. Uh, and a little detail, another detail is uh, sometimes they choose the uh, traditional dress um because of their their family's origin so if i'm berber i'm gonna wear the berber clothes if someone else is from the northern moroccan he will wear the northern uh custom marriage yes thank you that's a good point yeah and uh, the the, uh, the picture below is about Amaria. it's one of a kind career held by four men or more it depends on the weight of the bride or the weight of the Amaria <laughs> or the weight of the Amaria itself. Sometimes it's as, it's as big as, I don't know, it's so big. And sometimes it's easy to, to help. Or more to carry the knight's princess. That's really a sign that she's above everyone there. She's the star, she's the princess, even the queen of the, of the knight. And she should, she must uh, smile to everyone, wave to everyone, Sometimes they give her some sweets or some henna, like, and she can throw it to the uh, to her friends, to the family, to the to the guests in general. And she sees everyone on, in the whole uh, room. Yeah. This is the last picture. I choose this picture because I loved it so much. Okay, now I'm going to move to the videos. I have two videos, one of one minute and the second one of three uh, minutes. Should I, yeah. should I move to the, the videos, yeah? Yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, please go yes. ahead. Yeah. yeah, just when, uh, okay. Can you, you can hear, right? You can hear no, the- uh... No, no, Hajar, could, could you please just, uh, yeah, stop, stop sharing the screen, okay? Okay. Uh, try again. Now share the screen again. Okay, wait, I'm just going to. How could I move? Okay, now. No. Okay. Can you just delete it from, from your part? No, I cannot. Or Thank another you. way perhaps is to, yeah is to send me the link and I can share the, the video. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so please. Yes. What do you, because I'm ah, so sorry. This okay, is my that's first fine. time in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> that's why I'm not that good, you know? That's fine, just share the screen. 
no, I forgot where did I share the screen, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, There's yes. a bar um, probably on the top of your screen that this? has a ah, yes. red button. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when you share the screen again, um, you'll share the screen and it'll pop up that screen and ask you which screen you want to share. Um, below that, there's a little checkbox that, sh that says share sound. And I want to click that so we can hear your video. Okay. Thank you, Cheyenne, for the... I am learning in Zoom. The pandemic is giving us a lot of things, huh? new things, huh? <laughs> but it's good. Now, have you found the checkbox? Yes, well? I did. I'm just searching. Okay. Okay. Oh, can you see this? Yeah, this, now we can see the... These are my parents. <laughs> These are my parents' marriage. <laughs> As you can see, this is uh, 1993, yeah, 1993. Okay, let me see again if I can share the other one, if you can hear it. Is, you can hear it now? Is it working now? Not yet, no, not okay. yet. Could you please, Hajar, could you please yes. stop? Stop sharing the screen and try again. That's what I did, but it didn't really work. Yes, now I'm, yes. Okay. Yes. Can you see my screen now? Actually, no. How about now? Now we can see the picture of your parents with them. Okay, then that's good. So I can, how about now? I think you have to uh, go to the options and then uh, at the top again, and then you can click on the specific one for the PowerPoint. I'm just going to play it here. Yeah, you, 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 you can play it, but first thing, you should share the screen, okay? So that it can work. Is it good now? I can still see the photo of your parents. Oh, okay. That's so weird. Now, pl I... now please stop sharing that. Okay, restart everything. Okay. That's fine. That's great. Good. Good. Okay. Now please share the screen again. Okay. How about now? Okay. Let's see. We usually have a little bit of lag when we start sharing screen, so I can't see okay. it. Okay. Now, Hazza. Yes. Hazza. غاتمشي لا باغ لتحت ياك كتسمعيني مزيان لا باغ لتحت كاينه تما ايكرون بارطاجي اه راه درتها اوكي ناو وي كانت يات سي دي اوكي ناو اتس فاين جود ناو فاين كان يو كان يو سينا يا وي كان سي دي فيديو اوكي but I'm not sure that the, uh, okay, so go. Is it working? I can see the video, but I can't hear it. Oh. I'm going to link you. I don't know why. Can could you please, could, uh, Hajar? Yes? Could you please stop sharing the screen? What? Now, now it's working. It's working now. How about the voice? Uh, yeah, it's working. Okay, so I can start from the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, please start too. Okay, okay. Now it's good. Okay.
Do you hear that? Yes, it's working now, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, the second video, okay, of the three minutes, we're gonna see the rituals in one day. I could stay like this forever following you. Just don't get too far and I'll be right where you are. Okay, thank you so much for your... Uh, yeah, thank you, you Hajar. Could you please stop sharing the screen? Yes, I can do that. Okay. Is it, is it good now? Not yet. I stopped the... Okay, okay. let's wait for some time. Anyway, good. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Hajar, for uh, uh, this highly uh, hope... informative presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, we did, actually. Thank you very much. It was very insightful. Uh, now, as you can see, guys, wedding ceremonies in Morocco 
is a big thing, just like in any other parts of the world, but with the Moroccan touch, uh, of course. Now, please, we still have five minutes, around five minutes. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please, the floor uh, is yours. Is it, polite to, is it polite to ask if you've had a wedding yet? Yeah, could you please? Me? Yes, are you married yet? Have you had your wedding? Uh, no, 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 I'm not married yet, no. <laughs> yours will be beautiful. Hopefully in, in some months. <laughs> Hopefully in some, oh, thank you. That's so it's sweet of you. Way. Congratulations, it's coming up soon. Yes, it's coming up soon, thank you. <laughs> That's thank so you. exciting. Good to know that. Good to know <laughs> that, Haja. Good news. Let's, let's make a Zoom <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> this, I would love to attend via Zoom. It would be yeah, I, I hope that Hajar will won't you forget are to. In Morocco. <laughs> you are all welcome to Morocco. And even, even in a video call, it's okay. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. Good. So, so Hajar, please don't forget to, to invite me at least in person. I'm, I'm, I, will, yes. I, I will be representing my, my students in the wedding ceremony. <laughs> okay, yes, of course, 100% I will, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for the pandemic to get over, but it seems that pandemic is not letting us yet. I don't know yeah. where it's going to end, you know. Inshallah, inshallah. I cannot invite, I cannot invite just 25%. Yeah. Okay. The family is big. We need 200 people there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Good. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Hajar. So thank please, we have uh, another uh, question here in the chat box from uh, Professor Nancy. So the question is, what is, what is in the marriage contract? Is the what is the rate of divorce in Morocco? Yeah, very two very serious questions. Hajar, you can please you can answer if you like, and then I can yeah, perhaps complete the, yeah, yes. the, the response. Wait, wait. I can hear you clearly. I don't know why. Is it my connection or something? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Hajar. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the marriage contract is called Nikah or Aqd Zawaj. Yeah? Aqd Zawaj mm -hmm. yeah, or Nikah. You. Yes. And the rate of divorce in Morocco. It's like everywhere in the world, it's getting worse and worse and worse because people are not patient anymore. <laughs> so it's the same. It's the same case for, for every country in the world. Yeah, it's yeah, getting yeah. worse. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, concerning, I mean, the content of the, uh, yeah, of the contract, I think it depends on, on, on the couple, okay? It might yeah. include any agreements, agreements between them Concerning, for example, issues of property, okay, mm -hmm. uh, yes. or any other, yeah, specific detail they would love to, to include, okay. Plus, of course, an amount of money that is called uh, sadak, okay. Sadak, that's an amount of money that the, uh, let's say, that the groom gives, gives. To, the, uh, to, the, to the bride, okay, before the marriage, okay. So these are actually the I mean, two main important things included in the marriage contract. Concerning the rates of, of divorce in Morocco, actually the numbers are fright, frightening, just like any yes. other place in the world, uh, mainly uh, in the recent decades. And this is, of course, due to, to a number of, of reasons, uh, mainly economic, economic, yes. and also, yeah, and also the, the, let's say, the, the change in people's attitudes mentality. and mentality, uh, yeah, with regards to a number Sustain. of issues like freedom, like uh, a number of things. As you know, Moroccan society is a conservative one, and now it's undergoing a change, and this change, uh, I mean, leads to, perhaps, is one of the main reasons behind this, this issue of, of divorce. Yes, yes. But we can see, we, uh, I can, I can uh, say that we have a lot, there's one more thing, that we have a lot of uh, mixed marriages in Morocco uh, with other countries. Just in my family, we have a Pakistani 
group. We have a German, <laughs> a German group. We have a Somalian bride. Yeah, yeah these three. So yeah, good. It's now Thank coming a lot more to get married to other countries. Yes. Yeah, That's good, Haja. So uh, well, here is another question from the professor. One, Very uh, interesting yeah. one. Uh, I mean, one what do people, poor yeah. people one do people for people. marriage? It looks so expensive to have a wedding. Yeah, it is. It yes. is, actually. It is. But I can it say, but... I can say that in Morocco, people, though, I mean, Hajar represented perhaps one picture of what, let's say, perfect wedding ceremonies in Morocco uh, look like. But actually, poor people have also their the weddings. Person. Yeah, they celebrate uh, uh, perhaps in the same way, respecting, I mean, the uh, traditions of Morocco, but in a yes. less expensive manner. Mm -hmm. They would still, for example, have the a lot of people. Same rituals. Exactly. They would still have uh, the same number of people, the same stages, but not, let's say, for example, uh, let's say, renting a uh, room for, for, for the celebration with, let's say, uh, uh, an, an expensive amount of money. Okay? Yes. Say hello. <laughs> okay. That's my little nephew. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to let him go out of the room. Right? Yeah, okay. Uh, I can see another question by Cheyenne. She is asking, would it be acceptable just to sign the wedding contract and not having a wedding ceremony? That's actually the, uh, <laughs> that's the trend, Cheyenne, in recent years. Given the uh, financial uh, uh, reasons, the majority of people, I mean, prefer not to go for wedding ceremonies, right? Uh, usually grooms, okay? So they just would yes. just sign the contract and then uh, travel or something. But for for uh, like usually for women, else in the world. yeah. But but for women, they prefer yes. they prefer women uh, are festive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they prefer celebrating, <laughs> and they always go for that. It sounds like the weddings are really big. Um, like, it sounds like they're bigger than American weddings. How many guests do people usually invite to their wedding? Yeah. Hazar, can you go? The number of guests. Yes. Actually, it's, uh, yeah, you can go, Hazar. Go, please. I think she's, oh, okay. Yes. So the number of guests depends on the people's choice, but the on in general it's a lot of people it i can say it can exist to 300 yeah, that's the average number <laughs> in my parents they say they say to me that they had 250 people in their wedding so that's a win and, and i would add yeah. to this sorry Aja. Yeah. I would add that it depends on your social, let's say, status, okay? But again, it's each category of people, you know, have their friends. Poor people have, yeah, they have a lot of poor people to attend yes. their wedding ceremony. Rich people also have, yeah, have, have a lot of people to attend. So it actually depends on, yes. and it, on a lot of factors. It depends factors. on if the family is big, is, uh, and the Again, if the family is a all just few members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, please, before we leave? Perhaps uh, some students here are having a class directly after this one, and they might need to leave. Okay. Any other questions, please, or comments? Yes, so we would leave our professor, uh, Nancy. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, could you please end the meeting with, let's say, yeah, something with your remarks, uh, yeah, concerning 
wedding ceremonies concerning this presentation? Sure. I mean, I think it's, it's, it was beautiful to see. Um, and it's, it's really interesting that everyone's still keeping those traditions alive or trying to. Um, it's interesting that uh, the divorce rate is still high. I mean, it, it sounds like they're trying, you know, they bring these two families together that they want the marriage to work and have children. Um, but, you know, like the everything in the modern world, things change, things, um, you know, people get divorced. And, uh, but I think it's, it looks like a, a spectacular celebration, um, you know, with seven changes of clothing and oftentimes seven days of celebrating. That's one big party. That is a very big party. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a, it's interesting insight into somebody else's culture. So I appreciate you for sharing that with us. Um, oh, you. and, uh, it's, I'd love to visit Morocco someday. So oh, welcome. Inshallah, <laughs> yes, you're the most welcome. I mean, I get your city, by the way, if you want to come. <laughs> I'm in the south, okay? okay That's great. Wonderful. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Uh, now, I, yeah, the, the next thing I think that we should have is having a practical experience here in Morocco. <laughs> so <laughs> we're inviting you to do so as soon as possible, inshallah. So guys- If you come in the uh, summer, you will find a lot of Within ceremonies, Within ceremonies and, yeah. yes, and you can attend whatever you want. Yeah, good. I'm telling so, you. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your attendance. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we appreciate thank it's you. an honor uh, to have you among us in this class. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank and uh, you. see you in the next. Yeah, thank you, Hajar, and uh, see thank you, you in the next class. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so. Uh, Thank you. Could you please stop? <laughs> okay, Hazar, we're going to meet after uh, yeah one or two minutes. That's fine. Now you stop sharing the the screen. I just need yes. to stop.